praise the name of the Lord. We want to thank God because he has been faithful. Thank you so much for we have been traveling this uh, this journey of preaching and you have been watching me and I want to appreciate you so much. As we all know that we are in the month of celebration and thanksgiving, this uh, week we will tackle the topic giving and our reverence book will be the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 7. And the Bible says, but since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge and uh, in complete honest, uh, honestness and in the love we have kindled in you. See that you excel in this grace of giving. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. uh, we, uh, Paul was talking to the church of Corinthians, telling them, I know now and I am sure and I have seen that you have excelled in some things. The gospel that we have preached to you, you have already excelled, especially in the gift of speech, in the gift of knowledge and in completion of honestness and also in love that we kindled in you. I know and I have realized that you are okay in that but he said now that you're okay in all those your love is okay and it is complete your speech has been has been okay and also your love towards each other has been okay but now I just need to uh, you to excel as you have excelled in all other ways I want you also to excel in this grace of giving because he knew that giving without giving you cannot touch the heart of God without giving you cannot go on well and you cannot move from where you are to another level so he uh, he told them the church of Corinthians I just pray and I ask for God to help you so that you may excel in this grace of giving and that is what I have come to tell you that during the whole of this week that you may excel not now that God has known you love your neighbors as you love yourself you know how to speak the word of knowledge has been in you I just request you in this month of, uh, of, of, of great harvest that you may also excel in the gift of giving what is giving? Giving is a disposing of property by voluntary transfer without receiving value in return that is what gift is all and also we can say that giving is charity and also we can say it is providing love or other emotional support in showing caring hallelujah giving is taking out uh, what you have and you share with your with your friends you share with the vulnerable children you share with other people it is not your thing you are uh, you yourself you share everything that you have but God said that you may excel also in this giving. There are so many types of giving and we are going to tackle each one of them and I know God will bless you so much let us know the type of giving. What can you do or what, what are you supposed to do? Number one part of giving it is willing giving. Hallelujah. When I talk of a willing giving you read in the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 to 19 whereby we get a servant of God who was called Abraham. Abraham had love. He had excelled in everything. But God wanted to test Abraham. Do you really love me? Do you mean that I have a portion in you? Can you offer everything that you have? Now after staying for all so many years without a child, God promised Abraham, don't you worry because my promises are yes and amen. In due time, I will come and you'll become the father of the nation. And by the time God was promising him, he was already of age and he was to wait upon the Lord. And the Bible says that his time came and, and the wife Sarah gave birth to a child who was called Isaac. But the Bible says after a duration of time God told him and he called him and told him Abraham I know you love me I know you have 
excelled in so many things. Your speech is okay. Your knowledge is okay. Your wisdom is okay. But he told Abraham, now I want you to excel also in giving. I want you to give your only son. You know it was a great test. After praying God for a long time, after trusting and believing God in a, a, a long period of time, and then you are blessed. And God said, now give that what I gave you. The Bible says that because Abraham was a willing giver, he said it is okay. And he took the child. The Bible says he took a child uh, and, and two servants and also firewood and an hive and a donkey. And the Bible says they climbed the mountain. You know what? There is one thing that I realized that a giver know how to separate. The Bible says when they went for two days, the third day, the Bible says Abraham saw the mountain that God had told him to go and sacrifice there. The Bible says now he told the two servants, stay here and also the donkey. And he went up the mountain with Isaac, the firewood, the knife. You must know how to separate. Why did he separate himself with the two servants? Yet still he woke up very in the morning. He did not tell Salah where he's going. He took the two boys. He took a donkey. But now when he reached at a time when he was about to offer the sacrifice, the Bible says he separated himself with the two, two servants and the donkey. If you become a willing giver, you must know how to separate. There is a certain state that you will lead and you know if you carry the two boys they will come and say what you did and when I bring the kills, if you carry the donkey as you are, are, are just about to give the sacrifice, the donkey will produce the sound and everybody will know where you are and what you are doing. The Bible says he separated himself and then he goes to the mountain and when he was about, he, he prepared the fire and now he planned the, 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 the firewood. When he was about to, uh, to kill his son, the Bible says after God saw the willingness of him, the willingness that he had and the love he had with God. He saw that he cannot compare God with anything. He knew he was the one who gave the son and he's the one who have asked for the son. The Bible says, as he was about to kill uh, his son, the Bible says, uh, God called him and he say, Abraham, Abraham, don't you harm your son? Look back and you'll see the lamp. God is about to produce the lamp. You know what you need is allowed to you. It's only that you don't. God is willing. God is intending to tell you, excel also in the process. Excel also in this gift, in this grace of giving so that he may produce the lamp in the wilderness, the lamp in the bush, so that you may never harm your children. Hallelujah. That is the type, number one type of giving, the willing giving. After God realized that Abraham is a willing giver, he did not allow his son to be killed. Hallelujah. You must be willing, you must be willing to give, so that God may produce. And he, the Bible says, ask Isaac stayed for a long period of time. He, he excelled in willing giving the, and increased the age and the number of living of his son and also his life. Hallelujah. Number one, I have said, you must be a willing giver. Number two, number two, we call it a big retro giver. If you look at the book of Mark chapter 12 verse 42 to 44, I am talking about now the big retro giver. Aha, uh -huh. Mark 12, 42 to 44. The Bible says that there was a widow in the uh, one day, Jesus went to the synagogue and he go, when, when people were giving the, the offering, he stayed and watching. He looked at the people coming and giving their sacrifice. The Bible says they were rich men, but among the rich people, there was one widow who had only two coins which in exchange could 
could be very little coin, just few coins. But the Bible says the rich people came and give thousands of money, give dollars of money. But the Bible says they were giving and leaving some other amount in their pocket and they were giving to be seen. But the Bible says this woman came humbly and gave what he had, just a few coins. And Jesus said, Verily I say to you that among of you who have given sacrifice this morning, who have given offering this morning, among you it is only this widow who have given the biggest portion. Why? Because yet he was literal, but he had a big heart. She had a very big heart. He was giving what he had without remaining in anything, without remaining with anything. He trusted God with his love. He trusted God with all what he had. He knew that uh, she knew that uh, it is God who gives and it is God when you give there is an increase. If you give and you remain empty, God will increase you. Hallelujah. He was, she became a literal but a giant in giver. He was very young. He was, maybe he was very old and he looked weak though weak outwardly but inside he was a big giant, a giant giver. God is willing for you to learn how to give. God is willing you that you became a retro giver. We are going out for a break, but we are coming back again so that we may see another type of giving. Hallelujah. And as we came, we are going to look number three, the stingy giver. Don't touch that dial. We are coming back after this worship. Enjoy this worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for such a worship. We, we glorify the Lord in his presence. There is joy. There is that touching of the heart. Before we went for a break, in case you are catching us up, I was talking about the type of giving and I have said there is willing giving that was found in Genesis 22 verse 1 to 19 and also I had said there is a big retro giver who are uh, in Mark 12 42 to 44. Now I said that we are going to look about the stinging giver when you go to first Samuel chapter 14 and verse 17. Uh -huh. The Bible says, then Saul want to offer the spoil of Amalekite. Praise the name of the Lord. Because of that thing he gave me, Saul decided to give out the Israelite to the Amalekite. He wanted to take advantage of him. He did not worry the, 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 the problem that the Israelite had, but he decided instead of this Israelite releasing them so that they may be free, I will offer them to Amalekite so that they may be, they may be distorted in their life. But I thank God because of God of Israel who are together with him was together with his generation. And number four, there is a sacrificial giver. Number four, sacrificial giver. If you read to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 24 and verse 24, you'll get a servant of God called David who refused to give that which cost him nothing. Hallelujah. David decided instead of giving out the clan of Israel to the, to the Egyptian and also to sell their heart to the devil, he decided I I better remain quiet. I better remain standing so that so that I may save my clan and also when you look at his life when there was a Philistine who had, praise the name of the Lord, who had been distorting the Israelite, who was, uh, who was uh, discouraging the Israelite and who was inserting fear in them the Bible says uh, when David was sent by his father, he went to the battlefield and everybody was shivering, everybody was fearing about this Philistine but he decided, instead of this God, to of Israel to be mocked always. I will offer my life to this God, to this man who is called a Philistine called Samson. And the Bible says, the Bible says, now when he was there, the Bible says, after he was mocking the God of Israel, David decided to get in. The, the, this giant called Goliath, the Bible says, now uh, uh -huh, David confronted the giant. And uh, the Bible says, he was too huge. Everybody was fearful. 
Gilgali. But David did not see the hugeness of the giant. He said, this man is very huge for me not to miss him. The Bible says, with just a stone and a string, he killed the giant Goriath. So he offered himself sacrificially instead of God of Israel being mocked and I'm here. I know I can use a string, the one that I have been using when I'm taking care of mother sheep of my father. I can use it. I can offer my life instead of God of Israel being mocked forever. That is sacrificial giver. He was a sacrificial giver. So, uh, the Bible says, then he killed the giant and the God of Israel was lifted higher. Can you offer a sacrificial give? Can this year, can you offer such a sacrificial giver? Because so, uh, David offered a sacrifice and saved the clan of Israel. Number five, the contagious giver. Hallelujah. The convictious giver. Act five, chapter one, uh -huh. verse, verse one, uh, Act 5, 1 to 10. The Bible says, uh, and the enemy, uh -huh, we get the man of God called Anania and Saphira when they were selling their rod. You know, the, uh, there was a time for giving in the church where the Saphira and Anania were, were fellowshipping. And the time came when they were supposed to give the offering. And they went out, they sold their lad. Everybody sold their property, they sold their lad. And bringing that money to the church so that the ministry can continue. And the Bible says, now these two people, they sold the land and they decided to hide some amount. Hallelujah. But now, when he took the money, the Bible says, the servant of God asked them, is this the only amount that you have sold the shamba? And she said it is. And the Bible says, out of their hatred, out of their, uh, out of their lie, they all died and my woman and our husband they died out of lying to the spirit of God we call them the convicious giver who lied it is your property nobody had asked you to give but you said you can give though you have not given out though you have lied there are those that are called contagious giver may God save us from the tongue of lying better not promise something in where you fellowship better not promise something without fulfilling because God calls you and put you in the category of people who does not fulfill their, their desire who all of what they said or their promises. So the Bible says both of them died. May God save us. May God, but maybe you had told God, if God you make me uh, because of the problem, you are blessed. You are so down and you told God, if you bless me with the job by the end of the year I will do this and this. I have come to remind you. Don't you forget what you told God. Release what you told God. Release that what you promised. And Jesus told the disciple, whatever you did to one of them, it is me you have done it to me. So give. Learn how to give. Don't be a contagious giver who promise and never, and never give out. Promise and do it. Hallelujah. Promise and fulfill Fulfill your desire. Anania and Safila were there before you. So don't you, don't you forget what you told God. Release and God will increase you. The Bible says, given it shall be given to you. You know what? The problem is we don't see all the, 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 the person to be given is just around you. You are not going out to look for somebody to give. They are just around you. The opportunity is around you. That child who has no food, that child who is not going to school, that child who has no clothes, where else you are piled with good clothes and you are not wearing, the opportunity is there. Be a giver, be a giver, a willing giver, not a conversious giver. Give it out and God will increase you. Some of us, we are holding our blessing. Some of us, we are holding our blessing. At the end of the year, God was, God was looking for your heart to bless you, to lift 
protect you, to take you to another level. But you are just there holding. You are holding things that are not helping you. You are holding things that you feel they are very important to you. Give it out. Give it out. Don't have a big stock that you, you are not wearing, you are not using, yet still you cannot give. You have an opportunity where you are working. You are given a chance, yet still where you stay, there are people who are not working and you cannot give them the chance. Give it out willingly. Be a willing giver. Be a sacrificial giver. Hallelujah. And God will increase you. You know God is waiting for you to take out what you told him. To take out that what you promised so that he may increase you. You must be empty for God to increase. For God to see there is empty thing and he can promise you. I came here to declare that you may be baptized with this grace of giving. This month of big giver. This month of sacrificial giver. This month of great harvest. I came to pray to you that you and I came to remind you be giving. Give out. Release it so that God may increase you. Hallelujah. You know he said give and it shall be given back to you. The person who is supposed to go give, he is around the corner. He is or she is allowed you. You give it and you know the problem is we are not told who will give it back to us. But God knows. Give it plant in the morning, plant in the daytime, plant in the evening. You may never know which one will shoot first. You never know which will produce or which will yield. You are supposed to plant. I pray that, like Paul that you may excel also in this grace of giving. I know you can speak. I know your wisdom. I know your greatest thing and I know the love you have for the gospel. But I pray you may excel also in this gift, in this grace of, of giving. You know Paul so that these people of Corinthians, they were very okay. They were well up. They had everything that they need. But he said, I know you have a lot of knowledge. You have a lot of love and you have qualified in those areas. But I pray you may also excel in this gift of giving. And I pray also you may excel regardless of what you do. May you excel also in giving. And number six, the Bible says that we have people who are called consecrated giver. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 to 5. We get the Macedonia church. Hallelujah. The Macedonia church, they gave mm -hmm, who first give of themselves to the Lord. Hallelujah. They give themselves to the Lord fully committed to the work of God. And the Bible says until they were written. The Bible is in the book of remembrance. And that is why I'm reminding you the church of Macedonia. The Bible says they gave and Paul said that when we went there regardless in the midst of their severe trial and also extreme poverty you know, when the Bible says an extreme poverty, it means those people, they were they had nothing to offer. If you look at them with the naked eyes, they had nothing. And But Paul said, in the midst of their great trial, and also with their greatest and severe poverty, they gave extreme extremely beyond their measure. Hallelujah. You don't have to say that you don't have anything to give. First of all, give yourself to the Lord. The Bible says this church of Macedonia, they first gave themselves to the service of God. They were serving God with humility. They were serving God with a lot of earnestness. They did not want to be paid. They were there to offer. And the Bible says, Paul was saying, when they were, we were there, they pleaded us that we may also include them in this service of giving. Hallelujah. They were the one who was preaching them. Give us a chance so that we may also excel in this giving. And the Bible says they exceedingly be, uh, gave uh -huh, beyond our expectation. Paul, Paul is saying this church of Macedonia, though they were poor, they had poverty, but they gave, they preached Paul, include us in 
that service of giving, let us be there. Let us offer what we have. Let us offer ourselves. Let us offer our time. Let us offer what we have in God. God is waiting for you. No, you cannot say that you don't have money. You can offer yourself like the church of Macedonia. You can offer what you have. That what you have is what God is willing to give you to give in this month of great harvest. Hallelujah. And I know you are watching me and you are saying, Pastor, I did know it is important, but I am telling you, without giving, you cannot go higher. Without giving, give your time, give your clothes, give what you have, give your money for the sake of the people, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of vulnerable people, give it out. And I know God will bless you. I want you to, I want to pray for you so that you may be baptized with this grace of giving and let us pray because I know you're watching me. Oh God, baptize us with the generous spirit of the chief giver who gives out of their love and not out of compassion. Murmuring will not take place of money in our lives and the lives of our viewers. Men the money will not try us, me. It will not try us. Our bees will be subtracted and settled in Jesus' name. I pray for my viewers that you may lift them to another level. Love giving in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And maybe you are not born again and you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. The most, the best gift you can give to God is receiving him as the Lord of your Savior. Repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I know you gave yourself to me so that you may save me. I receive you in Jesus' mighty name. I pray and I believe. Amen. Thank you so much, my viewers. I was your preacher, Pastor Madam Boche from Kariobagi South Victoria's Faith Chapel. When you come there, we are going to receive you. And we are here very early in the morning tomorrow. Join us tomorrow as we continue to know what is giving. Write to us what you feel about the topic and what you would like us to amend because we are here to make sure that uh -huh, you enjoy the program. God bless you. Continue enjoying. Tune in tomorrow and I know God will bless you. Enjoy the worship. Hallelujah.